In this tutorial, we'll be creating this teleportation effect using only After Effects without any plugins. So this is the clip that I chose to work with. And as you can see, it has some movement. And what we need to do basically is track the shot and have a clean plate around this area until he appears. So first thing I want to do is mark the area where I want him to appear. So right about here where he's airborne, I'm going to drop a marker here just so it's easier to know. Then if I duplicate my clip, and go to the beginning of it, I can scrub through here and you can see that I get a rather decent clean plate around this area. So let's rename this to clean and then right click it, time and freeze frame. Then I'll make a rough mask here around the area that I need gone. So about this should be enough. And we wanna sort of position this roughly according to the shot. So I will lower the opacity and quickly reposition this. Okay, so this looks quite all right. Now, if you do have a stable shot, obviously you're not gonna need to track it and just go ahead and apply your clean frame. But in my case, I need to track my shot and I'm gonna be using Mocha. So I'll drop Mocha AE on my main clip here and let's go into the interface. Now I will select my pencil here and draw a rough shape around the area we need tracking and track forward. Now, as you can see, it does a decent job, even though he gets interfered with the mask. And we don't actually need the whole clip, we just need the first few frames here. So let's exit out and hit save. Then create a new null object. We'll call this track. And we'll go to the mocha here, tracking data, create track data, then export option, change to transform. And make sure you select your tracking here under the export and hit apply. So now if I enable back my clean plate and parent it to the tracking data, you can see it stays on there and we can have it basically cut out right here. I'm hitting Control Shift D to split my clip. And we can also maybe extend it one frame and simply add a few keyframes of opacity here, sort of fading in just over the course of two frames. So now let's start building the actual teleportation effect. So I'll be using a new adjustment layer and we'll call this distort and I'll be using the bulge effect. Let's go to about here. And what we want to do is basically set this point here right about where he's going to appear. So let me disable this for now, place it about here. And we want to make sure it covers pretty much the whole body here. So I'll set this to 300 and this to 200, just so we cover around this area. Now let's go to the section that will appear. Set two keyframes for my radius here. Go a few frames back and set them both to zero. Let's hit U to bring them up. And we want to set a keyframe for the height as well. So I'll set it to zero. Click on the stopwatch. Go here and set it to one. Now we also want to add a bit of like a bouncy distortion. So the way we can do this with this effect is if we go a few frames forward, we can set the height to something like minus 0.3 and this basically goes inside and a few frames forward back to zero. So if we play this back, you can see we get this sort of a bouncy distortion here and it's gonna add a lot to the teleportation effect. I will also set my taper radius here to 25, maybe even 35, just a bit here. And let's add our actual color and shockwave. So I've got this stock footage from Video Copilot, which is actually a free one. And it's this basic shockwave here. Let me just isolate it for a second. And I want to control the time of it. So right click it, time, enable time remapping. And what I like to do is speed up the beginning. So right about here, I'll set a keyframe. And I'll drag these two to the beginning, like so. Just so we have sort of an impact and then it fades out. Drag this maybe a bit here. So we want to parent it to our tracking data and we can set the transfer mode to screen. Let's position this accordingly. So right about here, we want it to appear and we can scale this up or down however we need to. And I want to be using multiple layers of the same shockwave. So the first one, we're going to place it right about here. And I actually want to add a bit of a fast blur to it. So it's sort of like a smoky effect and we'll set the radius to maybe two. Let's duplicate it and get rid of the blur effect. Then to give this some variation, I'm gonna rotate it and maybe scale this down a bit. And this one we might scale up just a bit more. 
And on my second shockwave, I will add a hue and saturation effect. Select colorize. And this way we can give it some sort of color here. So I'll up the saturation a bit and let's scroll through it and choose our color. Let's say something greenish. So this will be good enough. Okay, looking pretty awesome. So as you can see, the bump from the clean plate and onto the original is pretty much unnoticeable with the distortion we've got here. So let's finally add some shake to add some more impact. I will pre-compose everything here and move all attributes. So in this pre-comp, I'm just gonna hit S, hold down shift and hit P to bring up the scale and position. Let me set two keyframes right about here. And when the effect happens, I'm gonna be zooming in just a bit here and position this sort of like in the center. Let's select these keyframes, hit F9, go into my graph here. And I just wanna adjust the graph like so. So it sort of zooms in when he teleports. Lastly, I'm gonna be adding a shake. So I'll create a new adjustment layer. And I've already got a preset of my shake that I created in a previous tutorial. So basically, if you search for wiggle, there's a wiggle position here. And if you create similar keyframes to these ones here, you can basically create a shake. And I've also got an exposure effect with three keyframes. So it sort of adds to the impact. Lastly, I'm gonna turn motion blur on, and this is how you can create this teleportation effect. Now in the original one, I had him teleport out at first, and actually I'm not using any tracking or clean plate for this one. So if we go frame by frame here, you can see that we've got this sort of a jumpy cut, but the distortion kind of makes it unnoticeable, so I figured it works and looks pretty cool. Right, so this is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.